Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are 20 things you can do with Spotlight on your Mac that don't involve searching for files. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So Spotlight is a great tool on your Mac for searching for files and you probably know that you could also search for other things. In fact, I try to use Spotlight only to search for those other things. If I want to search for a file, I do that in the Finder. So here are 20 different things you can do with Spotlight that aren't searching for files. First, go to System Preferences and then go to Spotlight and make sure you've turned everything on for these to work. I've turned off various things here including searching for files because we're not going to use that in this tutorial. So let's start off with something really simple. I'm going to activate Spotlight each time using Command Space rather than the menu bar. Then if I search for Weather I'll find the results for Weather and you can see them there below. Now if the result you want isn't at the top you can use the arrow keys to go down to get to it. Command Down will actually jump to the next section so I can quickly get to the weather. And you can see here the local weather including a forecast. You could also search for weather in another location. So just type Weather and the name of the location. And then you should get it and it will most likely be at the top. Note that if you see a result like this but you want the expanded results all you need to do is press the Tab key and then you get all that information there to the right. You could also find sports scores. So you can do it for an entire league like this and then I'll tab here and get results that I could scroll through. You could also go and just search for a team. And then you could see details about that particular game. Even how all the players did. You could even get schedules as well. And see the upcoming games. Another thing you can do is get stock prices. And you can do that by just using the symbol. And then Tab will give me more information. Sometimes it helps to put the word price after it. So I can do DJI for Dow Jones Industrials and then price. And it will be the first result there. You can get definitions for words by just using the word. But you could also use define and then the word and that will usually put it closer to the top in some cases. Here I've got the definition down here and I can get to it with Command Tab. But a quicker way to do it is to actually type the word and then use Command L and it will jump right to the definition no matter how far down it is in the list. Now you can also use Spotlight to do a web search. So before you even launch your default web browser you can simply search for something and then you can see Siri suggested websites down below. But if you use Command B right after typing it will go right to the search. And that's actually less steps than launching the browser or switching to it and then doing the search. Now you probably know you can do math calculations very easily in Spotlight. You can also use parentheses. Something you really can't do in most calculator apps. So you can get results like that. In addition you can use constants like that and you can use functions like that. Plus when you do a calculation like this you can use Command C to copy the result. Then you can paste it anywhere you want. You can also do quick currency conversions. Just type the currency like USD for US dollars and you'll get a conversion after it. If you want a different currency just use in and the name of the currency like that. You can also press tab and you'll get more information here. Usually the top currencies to convert it to. You can do measurement conversions as well. So you can do something like 10 miles and it's going to assume you mean kilometers. But you could also do another unit like this to convert it to something else. And tab will also give you more here. Works with liquid measurements. Works with weights. Just about anything. You can also do temperature conversions. So you could do say 60 degrees and since it knows I'm in the US it's going to assume I mean Fahrenheit and it's going to convert that to Celsius. But I could actually type F after it like that or C after it like that. You can also use Spotlight as a way to quickly get Wikipedia entries. So just type something in and then look for Siri Knowledge. And then you'll get the Wikipedia entry here. And you could always press return and it will jump to the full entry. You could also get movie information and times. 
And if I tab I can see information here as well as times in local theaters. If we search for something that is already available for rent or streaming then you'll not only get that information there but links to take you right to renting it in the TV app. Now another thing you can use Spotlight for is to search for and launch apps that you have installed. But you don't need to type the entire app name or even just the beginning of it. For instance I can start typing GarageBand and it will come up. But I could also type GB. Spotlight is going to recognize the first letter of each word or the first capital letters in a word like in GarageBand. So I can type MW and you can see it comes up with Microsoft Word. And also instead of just launching the app you can go right to a recent document. When you use Tab here not only do you see the app there but if you tab again you go over to the list of recently opened or currently opened documents and you can press Return and that document will open. You can also search for flights to see if they're on time or where they are. So I can see here I come up with this flight. A tab will show me a map and it will show me arrival information. Even gates. You can also do other things with maps. For instance you could type a description like this and then jump down to a map like this. You'll see it on the right there along with directions, hours, and a way to call, go to the website, all of that. If you know the exact address then it will take you right to it. Now you can also search for contacts. So you can start to search for a contact and go down to it and you can see I've got a couple down here. And note that in addition to seeing the contact information without ever having to open up the Contacts app you can click on one of these icons here to start a message, send an email, or make a phone call with FaceTime. You can also search for music. You can search for artists, albums, or songs. And in this case I've got that album here in my music collection and I could actually start playing it. Or if I don't I can go to iTunes store information or if I'm using Apple Music I could start playing it from Apple Music as well. Now in addition to searching for websites you can also search your bookmarks and history without having to open Safari. You can see I can jump right down here to this and then a return will take me right to it. You can also search System Preferences. So instead of launching System Preferences and going to Bluetooth you can just type Bluetooth here and you can see the System Preference there at the top. A return will open up System Preferences taking you right to Bluetooth. You can also search for calendar events and reminders. So for instance if I know I have a dentist appointment coming up I can search for dentist and I could go down and there under events reminders I see a calendar appointment. This is really handy when you know you've got something coming up but you don't know whether you put it in the Reminders app or in Calendar. You can search for it in both places using Spotlight. And note if you put the word event after it it usually puts that at the top. You can also search for fonts and get a very nice display of them. So if you want to use a font you can type it in here. You'll see it appear here under Fonts and you can go through all of the different versions of it which can be a lot nicer sometimes than looking at it in a list inside of a word processing app or something like that. And to end I want to show you two tricks that you can use with Spotlight. One is this little window here. You can easily click and drag the magnifying glass and put it somewhere else. The only problem is when you do that it's no longer centered. Every time I bring it up it's going to be in that place again. However if you go to the magnifying glass here in the menu bar, click and hold, it will pop back into its default location. Another trick is using the Escape key. No matter what you're doing in Spotlight, whatever you're typing up here, anytime you use the Escape key it clears everything out and removes all the results so you can start fresh. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.